I had a physical stalker once. I had somebody turn up outside Radio 2 and try and follow me home and stuff. That was a picnic compared to this. Because what happened in this case is that you're fired on from all directions. Every time you open your phone, he's there. Every time you turn on your computer, he's there. And you know that what he's doing is he's adjusting or despoiling your digital self. Now, you may say, well, it doesn't matter. You just come offline. But the fact is that, you know, we live 70, 80, 90 years, but our digital presence goes on forever. And you can see yourself being dismantled. And you can't see it ending. I was afraid of what he could do to my family. I was afraid because you have to think round corners with this stuff. And, you know, we've seen knife attacks on MPs, MPs being killed, people who are prominent being attacked. So I'm not trying to give myself undue status here, but I had to think this through. So I can see this YouTube channel is an absolute fountain of hate. He wants that hatred to be so great that someone pays me a visit. And I know he wanted that because he put my home address out. So I had to take it seriously. I've got two teenage daughters. You know, I, I can't be casual about it. So at that point, I was scared for them. So we went to YouTube and said, come on, you know, what, what's going on with this guy? You can't allow him to just defame. But the fact that YouTube hosts this stuff, they have no responsibility. They don't care. I am disgusted by their lack of values. And Twitter as well. You know, the guy's still, he's in prison and he's still got a Twitter account. What the hell is that about?